What's going on everyone? Bob over at RC Auto Works and Mishka Sidlin. Okay, so if you've tuned in before, I have done this podcast thing prior, tried something out. I did have a different co-host. Shout out to Steve. Uh, Steve's schedule really, really uh, conflicted with how we wanted to do the podcast. And I need somebody else here to, to vibe off of, to be able to shoot questions. So um, Mishka is, he is the hands-on of everything behind the scenes. He does just about everything here. Um, he does the editing on some of the some videos. And now he's going to feed me some questions and stuff during this podcast. And he says he's good in front of the camera. We're going to see, though, because <laughs> if you watched our last podcast episodes, you will see Steve was good. Uh, he got really, really shy in front of the camera, but that's okay. A lot of people do. The main focus on this podcast is going to be where I can fill in. I do the YouTube stuff. I do the Facebook stuff. But I'm never able to talk a lot about certain subjects because people lose attention and they don't want to watch a 40, 50 minute long video. Yeah. And I truly don't know how long this podcast is going to be, but it allows me to get into topics. Uh, we already got guys asking us to cover certain stuff and that's what it's going to be about. At the end of the day, as I do every, everything else I do, the YouTube stuff, the Facebook stuff, it's to help you guys. So if you guys got questions, you want to see something covered, if you think it's stupid, you might not be the only one that wants to see that talked about. So don't hesitate to comment. Um, you know, you can reach out if you don't want to do it publicly. We're here for you. We want to help you out. So that's the main goal of this podcast. Um, going into that, I'm going to call this the reintroduction video, podcast, whatever we're doing. And I didn't explain that too. We're, we're doing a podcast so you can listen to this in your car, shower, bed, wherever you want to hear me. Um, but you can also watch it on YouTube. So it's going to be on both. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't even know where the podcast is hosted, but he's going to take care of that. Um, yeah, we'll likely be on either Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube. Those are probably going to be our three main okay. channels for that. And you know how to set all that up? Yep, absolutely. So I don't have to do any of that. <laughs> um, but, you know, as I was saying, the reintroduction, you know, we can call this episode one, we can call it whatever we want to call it. The whole thing behind RC Auto Works and how that started, um, we're going on 24 years now, uh, 2024. I opened up this business to help other people out. So just as I said before, this podcast is to help you guys. That's ultimately why I opened up this business. I wanted to do something different in life. I had a couple options when I graduated high school. My parents basically said, hey, you can either go to work. Um, at the time, my dad was doing construction, and I saw how much it really beat him down. And he was, I think at the time, probably around 45, maybe 50-ish. And it's not something I wanted to do. And they offered to put me through schooling, um, whatever I wanted to do. And I picked... Uh, I picked the automotive platform, which come to find out it's not any easier on your body. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, did that for a little bit. Um, started, from, started from a two car garage out of my parents', um, my, my parents house. Uh, we, we, we grew that. It was one of those things where guys would be calling up and, you know, hey, I'm trying to find where you, where, where's your shop located. It's like, no, it's, it's, in, a, it's in a two car garage, you know, but all the work is, is, is legit and everything. And that grew into this. Um, still got that two-car garage. Maybe we can do an episode out of there. Oh, that'd be awesome. Um, that would be really sick. You know, so that turned into this, and basically the ball started rolling, and we're here now. 24 years, oddly, uh, later. Uh, it's probably 24 years now, and what are we, in February? So 24 years and maybe like three months, give or take. Um, the time definitely blends in together, though, and I'm not, I'm not good with tracking time. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm surprised that, you know, you might get kind of jaded by the stuff that you get, you know, rolling into the shop. But every time I come over here, I see like NSXs or, you know, drag cars <laughs> or just like all the different cool Hondas that I'm obsessed with. So seeing yeah. it myself is just like, little, it's such a cool experience. A little different. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we, we get that a lot. A lot of guys will come through here. Um, if we have nice cars parked out front, they'll be stunned they'll either walk in or we'll catch them outside taking pictures yeah. which you know the biggest thing and, and it's funny when we walk out there um we introduced ourselves 
but they always are, are, are super, you know, they'll, they'll be taking a picture and then they'll, they'll kind of like tuck it away and act like they weren't. <laughs> um, you, know, you know, as you said, this is a job. So I don't say I want to say I lose track of what we do here. Um, it's, it's a dream job. It's, it's truly a blessing. I, I get to do this every single day of my life. Um, but at times, you know, you, you can forget about it because you do have late nights that you're pulling your hair out trying to figure something out. Um, you know, you have late nights that maybe something didn't go as planned that you're fabricating and now you need to redo it. And in order to stay on schedule, you need to stay an extra couple hours. Um, all that comes with having a very, very understanding wife. Um, if I didn't have her by my side, uh, you know, and, and I'm sure a lot of people say this all the time, but it, it's, it's the honest truth. If I didn't have her by my side to be there and be supportive, uh, this wouldn't be happening in a sense. So I'm always super appreciative of that. That's awesome. Um, what else we got here? Um, I kind of want to know, uh, well, you spoke a little bit about your story and, and how you started. Can you remember a specific project or something that maybe kind of took you over the top as far as being a little bit more recognized? Uh, the first real big project was um, we, we did a full turbo kit inside, the, in, inside my, my parents' garage. We got it, every, everything was set up 100%. And I think the customer was blown away by it after you know because he showed up and he, he shows up to a two-person car garage or a two-car garage and yeah. not expecting to get the quality they got and you know when he when he came out he kind of was stunned and that led into him telling his friends and him telling his buddies which uh you know one of those guys actually just reached out to me not too long ago um awesome. he, yeah he fell out of the scene i think he said but he, he got he picked up a honda and he didn't think i would remember him but i i, I did um uh, there we'll talk about that story another time because that's going to be a whole different you know, thing <laughs> but uh, i want to say that one was our first big one that's awesome um, and in, in that garage were you doing all the fabricating too like welding and all that yeah so the actual big one of the big big things that started the venture into something uh into this was there was fender braces for the crx and at the time there was only one company that made them um I don't remember the company. I believe they were a company located in Japan, so they weren't super easy to get a hold of. Yeah. And I was contacted by a bunch of customers. This was back in uh, the, the forum days. Yeah. Um, so we had the CRX resource, which I don't even know if anybody still knows what that is. Uh, that was owned by a guy, I think his name was Steve Jones. And they wanted me, they, they, they approached me, and, and they wanted to know if I can make the fender braces and or what price can I offer them to? So, you know, at that time, doing everything from my home garage, I, I, I sourced a machinist. I, I took my parts to him and I said, hey, can you cut these? And, you know, he, he kind of looked down on me because I only had like 10 pieces to cut. And, you know, keeping in mind, you walk into a giant warehouse full of CNC's that they're doing, you know, uh, I don't even know what, they, what they're doing. Some big, massive stuff. And then I, I, I'm, you know, at the time, trying to think my age here I graduated from high school 18 I was like 19 or 20 so a young kid walking in with 10 parts in their hand yeah. you know nothing major yeah um, I had to kind of convince them to take on the job and you know after that it just I, I started pumping out those fender braces that led me into saving my money uh, the fender braces were first made with a MIG welder that started into then I saved the money and I got a TIG welder and once I got the TIG welder, we started making the turbo manifolds. Um, the turbo manifolds were nonstop. I was sitting in my garage. It seemed like for eight months at a time. Uh, during winter time, it, since the garage wasn't heated, either I had a heater going on or I was off that day because it was too cold. Yeah. Um, and it was just pumping out manifold after manifold after manifold. And at that time, even though nowadays it's it's there's not a lot more there's not a lot of people producing these still there are there are some companies but at the time it was it was slim and then there was a couple other guys that got into it too and it was kind of like a competition mm -hmm. um i think at the time there was two or three other guys which i don't think the other guys are still around i know the one guy he i don't know what happened to him but yeah it, the, that that just led into that um i assume that was for like a b-series 
Uh, single cam. So, oh, really? so the, the D series, D is wow. in David. Yeah. The, well, the single cam at that point, you have to remember, was was really really big. Mm. Um, you know, the single cam nowadays is it, it, not that as big as it was, but everybody wanted. Uh, you know, you, you're talking about the homemade turbo days. You know, if that it's going to age me sh- too, and you know. A lot of our probably listeners and viewers probably don't even know about these websites anymore. Yeah. You know, it was about piecing together everything yourself, but then trying to find the, the flaws in it. Mm. Um, the other big company, which I, they're, I don't think they're around, SS Autochrome, I think was the name. Uh, they made a specific turbo manifold that looked amazing. It would break if you looked at it wrong. <laughs> So, uh, of course, it was, you know, I saw the opportunity. Well, hey, if these are breaking, let me produce something that doesn't break. And, you know, I have some crazy, some of the first stuff I fabbed too, you know, I remember there was a dump tube that literally looked like a snake. Um, I still have pictures of those saved in my, I think, photo really? bucket, yeah, my photo bucket account. Um, which last time I logged into my photo bucket account, I think you have to pay almost now. So I can try to almost dig those yeah, up. Yeah, I think I think they ruined forums in a way. They like ruined all the links and stuff. Yeah, and everybody hates photo that, bucket. That's what I was gonna say, man. You go now, you're looking at a do do it yourself stuff from you know even four years ago. It's like none of the pictures work. Like, yeah, yeah. You know, so. Um, what but a bummer. Th- yeah, that's that spiraled into that, and then ultimately, I, I want to say I was doing that out of the garage for about two years or so. Um, and you know the rest was kind of history that's awesome yeah um we opened up the shop we had no lifts we had a bandsaw um we had some 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 cabinets that didn't belong in a shop (laughs) definitely tell you that man um not only were they kind of falling apart they were they were literally home furniture cabinets um you know it looked like from somebody's entertainment system um you know, it, yeah, and, and it's just, it's been ever, it's been rolling ever since. You know, I, I remember the first couple of years, you know, when you start a business, they always say the first year is the hardest. And it's not necessarily true. If you can get past the first three years yeah. and five years, then you're really kind of on to something. And you no, know, I remember when we first opened up and people came in, keeping in mind, I was roughly about 19, 20-ish, give or take. Um, Young kid, people walking into a new shop, nobody wanted to come through, nobody wanted to actually do anything. So we slowly, we slowly did routine maintenance stuff that, that we've always done routine maintenance, but that's how we kind of advertised we were around. Um, people were bringing in, you know, oil pan jobs, brake jobs, and then we were showing what else we were capable of doing. And that kind of also got the ball rolling. So we had the internet stuff going on where guys started to kind of know about us, but locally, it was more so, you know, we were trying to get the word out even more, which, you know, it's back in the day, I'll, I'll add, you know, you got to remember what time we were doing this around. We didn't have as much as you guys have now at your fingertips. Yeah. Um, you know, smartphones, if we, had, if we had smartphones, I think BlackBerry was the big thing. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you didn't have all the cool stuff that we can do on phones nowadays and, you know, record the videos. So, you know, it was kind of an uphill battle. Um, it, it was good in a sense too, though, because nowadays everybody, you know, anybody can have a camera phone and they can be a, you know, a YouTuber. Um, you know, laptops are super cheap, tuning software is super cheap. So anybody can get the stuff now and they can act like they're, you know, mm-hmm. a mechanic or a tuner or a shop owner. But in reality, you know, it, it, it's a lot more easier nowadays to fake the funk. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and I think that, that that's a good and a bad. I mean, it's definitely a bad for, you know, the industry as a whole. But you hope that these guys that are kind of faking it more so kind of learn from their mistakes quickly and they can grow into something. Yeah. Um, I'm always a firm believer that there's enough success to go around. And I'm not one of those that has to badmouth anybody to, to bring me up. So, you know, the more people that are successful, you know, the, the better, the better. Yeah, and th- that's something that I really admire about you and your shop because that's something that really attracted me to you guys was that you were so willing to share the education and, like, explain everything. Um, and you even say in, like, your videos, like, I don't really care if you even buy it for me, but, yes. you know, I'm just trying to teach you so you don't get ripped off by somebody else, which yeah. is huge. That, that's exactly it. And... You know, I want to say one thing before I go because I forgot to mention it. 
I have, we have some new lights, so it's a little bright for my eyeballs. <laughs> and number two, I'm not used to having someone here to talk to. And if we had a more of a better layout, we would be sitting across from each other. So I just wanted to get that out there. Yeah. <laughs> but as far as mentioning, you know, part, my job is to educate and share my knowledge. If you go somewhere else and buy it, that's fine. I understand. It's a business, business, you know, you got to do what you got to do. The biggest thing I tell people, though, is if you go somewhere and you find that product cheaper, you know, we got a, a blow off valve in front of us and we sell it for a pretty decent price. But can you go on the Internet and find it for cheaper? Yeah, absolutely. Can you go on eBay, Amazon? Yeah. When you have a problem with it and you bought it from Amazon or eBay, don't call us. <laughs> as bad as that sounds. It's true, though. You know, we can't offer the free tech yeah. support if you're not supporting us. So over the years, I've heard it many and many times. Uh, yeah, I bought it elsewhere because you were $10 cheaper, but I need some help. Well, that extra $10 could have been the free tech support that we give. Yeah. And, and that, that's the biggest thing. You know, and, and I'll say it, to be successful, not only you have to know what you're doing, you have to know, you know, how to work on cars. I personally believe, you know, it, it's a mental thing too where I see so many young guys starting off and even older guys. And they're more concerned about bashing the competition to try to get business rather than, hey, I'm going to do my best today and that's going to be enough. Like yeah. that's, that's the thing too. Like, that's whack. I, I don't like that at all. Oh, no, of course. And, um, you know, you'll see a lot of guys just, you know, well, well, my setup made more, or my setup, you know, this and that. And it's like, I, you know, honestly, too, it goes back to the, the message board days it's reminding me of. You know, the biggest thing during the message board days were, you know, this is, is what it is, were knockoff wheels. So, you know, guys would post their setup and they'd get trashed. <laughs> and and I, I would sit there and I'm, I'm looking at it and it's like, well, that's all the guy can afford. Like, why are you trashing somebody that is trying to be part of the car culture yeah. in a sense? Yep. You can educate them and you can say, hey, why these rims might be not as good as you think they are. And, and maybe the guy already knows, mm -hmm. you know, maybe, well, it's all I can afford. And, you know, next year I'm going to I'm going to aim to buy something bigger and better. But, you know, and, and I'll still say this. It's it's still the whole bad mouthing of people. It's it, of course it happens. It's always going to happen. Um, you know, it, it's to a point, though where I think a lot of people have a hard time trying to figure out who knows what they know. Yeah. You know, that, that's the thing too, back in the day, you knew the guys that knew their stuff. You had a handful of people, um, you know, you would be in certain, certain message boards were broken down a certain way. You know, you had the CRX group, you had the, you know, the EK group, the EM1 group. Um, you knew in those groups who to go to. You know, I was big in the CRX board days. Um, they knew, hey, my, my, my name was 90 Black CRX. Hey, go ask Bob. He's going to know his stuff. Go, you know, this or that. And, and the stuff I didn't know, I even had people that I would ask. You know, that's the other thing, too. A lot of people think when you, you know, you jump into a business, you automatically know everything. You know, I, I constantly am learning every single day. Yeah. And, and that, that's my whole motto. You know, I, I strive to learn something new and keep growing my brain in a sense. Um, that's awesome. I, I feel like I definitely get what you're saying with, like, the forum days because... I feel like I grew up in a golden age where it was like kind of the end, the tail end of the forums and yeah. like starting of like social media and stuff. Yeah. And so the way that I got into like learning about my car and, and really getting into like tuning, not that I am a tuner, but that I like was learning about tuning and like yeah. what different parts to buy and what's good, what's bad. Yeah. Uh, was mainly through forums. And mm -hmm. I was like on them every single day. like. At my old job, I was I was in the car forums yeah. all day, you know, and it was well, you know, and that's all we had. Like, mm -hmm. I was just talking to my daughters about this. My excuse me, my daughters are uh, thirteen and twelve, and, and they don't know anything about the message boards. So I was trying to tell them, hey, back in the day, now that makes me sound old, we had message boards, and if you had a question, you had to ask, and then you had to go about your day, and yeah. then log <laughs> back in. You know, if you went to school, you, you know, you log back in at night or after school and you're seeing if anybody responds and if nobody mm -hmm. responds, like bump. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you, know, you bump it up. And um, and that's the other thing, too. Probably, people probably don't even realize where the bump thing came from. Yeah. And, you know, some other sayings that I, I remember, too, that used to go around. And, you know, it was kind of like a, like I said, it was a car family. It was everybody knew 
each other in a sense. And, you know, unfortunately, I, I, I would assume some of those people have passed away. Um, but I'm always curious where certain people have maybe gone, um, yeah. which is, you know, it's always intriguing. Yeah, I, I think it's hard, especially now with social media. Everything is so visual, mm -hmm. and it's not so much about what you know. It's more about what you show. And like you said, you can fake a lot of the stuff. So yeah, that's exactly it's, it's it. Kind of made a lot of that, that's, a lot of bad stuff, but I mean, it, it's all it has its good too. Yeah, it, it's good and bad. It depends how you take it and and what you do with it. And you know, I think the biggest thing people have to understand is a lot of the stuff that they see on the internet is not true. And that can necessarily mean, you know, some bad, some, some, some good people in this industry have been torn down because there's bad information out there. You know, there, there's such yeah. and such of this, such and such of that. And, you know, it stinks. It, it, it takes some getting used to, um, you know, every now and then I can read something and it's like, you know, I look into it and it's like, oh, that's not the truth. Like, that's not the full story. But I don't try to get in there and argue. You know, it's not worth yeah. it. But, you know, it, it, you, you got to do your homework, I tell people. That's my, what I always constantly say. Um, you got to do your homework and research. And, and I encourage anybody to, you know, if you're a first time, you know, listener, watcher, if you don't know about us, RC Auto Works as a whole, you know, do your research on us. You know, we got guys that come in all the time and, hey, I'm shopping around. I'm, I'm going to a couple other shops, too. I say that's what you should be doing. That's a smart move. Mm -hmm. You know, go look at our, our reviews. Look at how long I've been in business. You know, that's the other thing too. It, it's really hard to fake when you've been in business for so long. When you know, it'd be a different story if like I was a millionaire and and, and I'm just doing this because it's fun. You know, this this is a daily job. This is supporting my family and other families too. So, um, which. You know, those fly-by-night companies usually only last a couple of years and then they're gone. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, <clears throat> let's talk a little bit about the next episodes or kind of what kind of different kind of episodes we'll actually be doing on this podcast. I Not gotcha. just a reintroduction, but maybe things to look Yeah, of course. Of course. So this episode is probably going to be boring and slow, um, <laughs> especially for new time people that are listening and watching. Um, it, what I am looking to take is the info I can't talk about. So the new, the, the new series that we tested out that is, is doing great is the Mythbusters series. Now, I, we try to keep those videos between 15 to 20 minutes long, and there's so much more stuff I want to talk about. Yeah. Um, we just did the one video on the fuel injectors and how they, a lot of people think they're just rebranded re Bosch. It was so hard to not go over a certain length I struggled with shooting those clips. Um, I wanted to get certain stuff out, and I wanted to make sure it was said how I wanted it to be, be said. So that's, I think it was like 17 minute long Mythbusters video. That took me about a couple hours to shoot yeah. because I was not happy with how st stuff was going. So this whole podcast stuff is gonna allow me to speak more on that. It's going to be, I'm gonna get in depth more. You know, We want people to comment on YouTube, and or podcast so we know what guys want to listen to what we want to hear so yesterday we posted the mythbusters episode and we already got guys that want us to to get in get in more about you know thermostats to get in more about the fuel injector stuff and this is what it's for yeah. this is what the whole <laughs> podcast is for um and then also which i did forget to mention we got some turbos up here rv6 is sponsoring this episode uh, we sell RV6 products. You can get them from us or you can get them from RV6 themselves. What this podcast ultimately allows us to do, we're going to have to find more space and figure out the camera stuff, but I really wanted to get an episode out. We can have some guest speakers. Yep. Um, I actually have a couple guys that want to be guest speakers, whether it be about automotive stuff. I do have a guy that talked to me about and if you watch my YouTube stuff, then you kind of may, maybe already know about this, men's mental health. Mm. Um, he's a very strong advocate about that. He has some stuff he's working with. And he said, hey, can I come on the show and just showcase some stuff? And That's I said, awesome. yeah, I That's said, absolutely. Really cool. So this is basically going to be just be an outreach for whatever we want to cover and whatever people want us to cover. Um, you know, I don't want to say no topics are off, off, uh, off the table. 
Um, I'm not looking to talk about, you know, political stuff. That That is off the table completely. Yeah. I will say that. <laughs> um, but, you know, men's mental health, if we want to talk about what it takes to run a business, if we want to talk about, you know, what's the, what's the worst thing that I have to do on a daily basis or a weekly basis, you know, what's some of the stuff that we face, you know, challenges and whatnot. That's what this is about. Awesome. Yes, sir. I like that a lot. Um, and I'm excited to hear that we've got, you know, some people already asking about mm -hmm. getting on the podcast. That's awesome because yeah. that, that's a big thing is getting interviews and different perspectives from different people, whether it be car enthusiasts themselves or maybe some vendors that you have or, yes. you know, just people in the industry overall. I, th I think that's awesome. Yeah. And when we originally did the podcast, when we had Steve on board, um, I think we did like two or three episodes. They were a hit. I just knew with Steve's schedule that we couldn't maintain a constant updating of videos and, and or the, mute, the, the sound portion of the podcast. So, you know, I put a pause on that and I literally contacted him and I said, hey, we need to do this. I don't have a set room that I'd like to have set up. We're going to do it in front of the dyno. Yeah. We're going to make it work. Um, he brought his super bright light that is blinding me. <laughs> I hope I look really good on camera. Um, I got my little light right next to it, which I'm going to tell you, man, it makes me look like I'm look, makes me look like I'm doing this in my basement. Um, but that's besides the point. So, you know, I, it, it's time to get this out. It's time to, to keep bringing bringing more uh, more media content out to you guys. And, and ultimately, you guys are liking it. So thumbs up there. Awesome. Yeah. Um, well, let's see. I did you have any uh, maybe a few questions for the podcast that we had? Yeah, for the uh, people watching. Um, I think you sent me. Oh yeah, yeah. Some, that was uh, so. That was gonna be for the next stuff. Oh okay. That was just my way to keep track. Is uh, I send him stuff, and that's how we keep track yeah. of stuff. <laughs> um, no, I'm I'm just looking over here. I know we talked a lot about some stuff. Um, you know, the other thing too that I, I do see mention here is the the, the team. You know, every, everything, let me say this, because we got a lot of guys that either walk through the door or they call on the phone and all they want to do is speak to me. And, and I'm, not, I'm not, you know, I'll be on the dyno. You'll hear the car. The door will be open. They still want to speak to me. We have a whole team to make this thing work. Without the team, we wouldn't, I, I can't, I mean, come on, think about it. How am I going to do this? How am I going to be putting cars together? It, it, it can't happen without the team. So that is just something that I wanted to mention as well. I mentioned the wife, you know, but I, I wanted to mention the people around me. Without them, I couldn't be doing this. Um, and even you too, you know, yeah, we're, 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 you know, you, you got a little bit of stuff that we're doing behind the scenes. And now, you know, this stuff that I don't, I, I don't know the technical stuff of all this. You got me mic'd up and hopefully it's still on. Hopefully, hopefully it's recording because I put it in my pocket. Um, that's all you. Um, and maybe that shows my age, but I don't got the time to learn all this new stuff. Man. Yeah, and you don't need to. You know, that's, you're, you're worried about the important stuff. And, yes. You know, the... Yes, yes. But... Um, I mean, yeah, that's, that's about it. What else do we want to discuss here in this opening little thing? I forgot yeah. there's two pages here. Yeah, um, maybe... I don't know if we want to be talking or mention a little bit about the next episode that we're going to be. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. No, that's, that's perfect. So we already got two episodes that we're going to be recording after this. Um, we're going to be talking about turbo systems, a whole, whole general forced induction. We'll probably throw some supercharger stuff in there too. Awesome. Um, I, I think so. So guys that are, are boosted, you know, it'd be a good episode. Guys that are looking to maybe get into boost and, and don't know, that would be a great starting point. So that, that's the thing too. Like if you're new, if you're just getting into this industry, you don't know anything, or maybe you know just a little bit, now is a perfect time too to be asking us the questions in this video so we can cover it for the next one. Um, we have, I, I know we did a catch can video before we want to do more of that because guys keep asking more and more stuff about that. Um, we got the dyno, of course, we're going to be talking about so many misconceptions with dyno tuning. It is unreal. Um, so that's going to be a great episode. Awesome. Uh, there's going to be some stuff that either, you know, I can show you here or there. And, and I, think, I think the whole dyno tuning world aspect, I think so many people are just confused by it and they don't understand stuff. And you know, one of the biggest things just speaking on that half is, you know, everybody doesn't understand that every dyno reads different. 
and it, and it doesn't matter the name brand yeah. of the dyno. I, I'm going to say that too because you know some guys will think a Mustang dyno reads higher than a dyno jet. That's not necessarily true. People might argue with me, but if you actually know how the dynos work, operate, and you can set them up, every dyno reads different. And a lot of people equate that to, well, my car made less horsepower there, so the tune might, must not be good. It has nothing to do with that. Yeah. You know, the big thing I tell people and that you got to remember is the dyno is a very big tool to use to calibrate your vehicle yeah. in a safe environment, and it's a super expensive tool. Yeah. Um, yes, yes. So. No, that, that's a good point because I hear it all the time, you know, when I have gotten my car tuned or, or mm -hmm. whenever I hear people talking about their numbers, they're like, oh man, my car makes so, so much more power and it's got, mm -hmm. you know, less parts and this and that. Yep. And it's just, it's a different, you got to look at the before numbers yeah. and the after numbers. It's not really, yeah. you know, like you said, every, every dyno is going to be different. Yeah. And that's it. It's, it's, you know, if you can get a before baseline on a car now, you know, of course, if it's all motor and you turbo it, well, there's going to be a difference. But I'm talking about a baseline stock, and then let's say you add an intake. You can see the gains. Let's say you add an exhaust. Well, you can see the gains. That, that's that's what's, what's fun about the dyno is, is seeing the differences when you add products, seeing, you know, we, we get companies that, we'll get guys that come in, well, I bought this downpipe, and they claimed it makes 25 extra horsepower. And in reality, and, and let me rephrase that too. They claim that you don't even have to do some tuning on some, some of this stuff. And there's the power's not even close to being there. Yeah. And then ultimately we tell them, well, hey, you know, go ask that company because they made those claims and, and go from there. So that's the one big thing that a dyno is good for. Besides what the actual dyno is for, is, is tuning your setup. But let's talk about that in a future episode because I'm going to yeah. keep going and going. Yeah. <laughs> um, most definitely. Yeah, well, I think that's pretty much it for this episode. Um, appreciate you guys watching and definitely subscribe if you haven't already. Um, we've got, like uh, Bob said, we've got a few more episodes in the works. Um, and if you've got any suggestions on different topics or things that you'd like for us to cover on new episodes, definitely leave a comment, message us, whichever which way you want to reach out to us. But um, yeah, thanks for tuning in, no pun intended. And uh, see you guys on the next one. <laughs> yeah, most definitely. I appreciate everybody tuning in. And if I didn't say to all our new subscribers and all our new fans and whatever, uh, you know, people that watch us, highly appreciate that. Uh, next episode, I think I'm going to bring some sunglasses. Yeah. <laughs> thanks. thanks we, we, can, we can turn it down a little bit. <laughs> thanks a lot, everybody. Peace. Peace.